Hi, my name's Shari Wiseman. I'm the chief editor of Nature Neuroscience, and I'm here today with Ivan de Arujo. Um, Ivan is a professor at the Max Planck Institute in Germany, as well as um, Mount Sinai um, in New York. And I was wondering, could you tell us a little bit about um, the motivation for your research, or sort of what questions you're trying to answer? Yeah, the overall question we are interested in is on body-brain communication. Mm -hmm. Several years ago, this was a kind of uh, 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 fringe kind of topic in neuroscience, but with the evolution of the techniques and the, some sort of uh, uh, resurgence of uh, classical physiology, mm -hmm. this problem became um, the center of attention of many labs right now. So this was always the question that puzzled me, how exactly the brain um, monitors the body that is attached to it, and how the brain influences processes in the body uh, beyond those already well characterized related to homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So basically I wanted to um, use some sort of circuit mechanistic approach to understand how the organ inside the skull uh, understands and controls the rest of the body. And uh, that's with what we've been trying to do over the last few years. I see, I see. So can you tell me more about the specific research that you've been doing? Yes, yeah, so we have concentrated mostly on how the gastrointestinal tract and the brain communicate. Um, we developed a, a special interest on the connection between the gut and the reward system. So many years ago we started characterizing responses in the so-called reward system of the brain to events occurring in the gut, especially nutrient sensing. And uh, as we became more, let us say, circuit-centered, we started to look at the vagus nerve as the main uh, conveyor of this reward messages from the gut to the reward system in the brain. And more recently, we also studied the spinal system as a parallel uh, um, a pathway for transmitting information from the gut to the brain and try to understand what the respective functions are. So we, we have, for most part, trying to understand um, how the body sends signals to the brain and how these signals are interpreted and change behavior. And more recently, we are interested in the uh, opposite direction, which is how the brain, in turn, takes this uh, information and alters the state of the body. In particular, systems such as the immunological system. Mm -hmm. So this is our more, uh, more recent focus of our research. So can you talk a little bit more about that? What, what kinds of... Um states are you interested in and, and how they interact with the immune system? Yeah, so one uh, question that I developed over many years and now I think is tractable in uh, neuroscience uh, experiments is to uh, understand the link between uh, changes in psychological state, mm -hmm. uh, what we call internal states, and the physiology of the body. Uh, one particularly striking example is uh, n our negative uh, psychological states like stress or, or uh, uh, trauma and uh, uh, the, f the, the effects that these internal states have on the immunological system, turning the body more susceptible to contamination and disease. So from a um, uh, uh, neurobiological point of view, we are trying to understand how exactly are the nodes that connect the emotional parts of the brain to the immunological system. And uh, uh, our uh, hint is that the influence of the brain on the gut via the parasympathetic vagus branch uh, connects the, the psychological states to the gut microbiome mm -hmm. 
And these alterations in the microbiome eventually impact on overall systemic immunity. So that's our hypothesis. And uh, we are particularly interested in an area of the brain called um, the central amygdala, which in our anatomical studies always uh, shows up as tightly connected to body organs. So, and because it's a, a part of the emotional brain, mm -hmm. we suspected that changes in amygdala activity influence the way the vagus nerve works, and then uh, the vagus will then change the function of certain parts of the gut that are responsible for maintaining a, a homeostatic microbiome. So we were interested in particular in a set of uh, uh, glands, mucosal glands in the upper intestine that are controlled by the vagus nerve. It, they, they are the only mucosal cells in the gut truly innervated, in particular by the gut. So what we find essentially is that as the emotional part of the brain, the amygdala changes, this change is communicated to these glands in the intestine via the vagus nerve, and the change in, in the mucosal barrier that uh, uh, um, results from this process will change the microbiome in a, let us say, negative way. Mm -hmm. And that will um, turn that organism more susceptible to uh, infections, in particular gut infections from, say, contaminated food and et cetera. Oh, interesting. So what might be the implications of this kind of work for treating psychiatric disease or even for just sort of promoting mental well-being? Yeah, this is a very good question that we are interested in because um, in th there is a, um, a very uh, tight connection between certain psychiatric diseases, uh, for example, depression or post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, the changes in the immune system. And uh, interestingly enough, for the case of depression, for example, one of the th approved therapies for patients who are uh, not responding to medication is vagal stimulation. So we think that one potential pathway by which the vagus helps not all but some of those patients is via this uh, system in which there is a slow change in the uh, um, um, uh, microbiome that then impacts on immunity and then eventually this can attenuate some of the depressive effects. So maybe part of the mechanism that explains the beneficial effects of the vagus nerve is this impact on, on, on the gut uh, uh, mucosal protection. And um, um, we think that by optimizing this process, we can eventually maybe make the vagal therapy more, uh, I mean, effective to more patients than it is the case today. I see, I see. So you mentioned that you've been working in this um, space for a long time about thinking about the interface between the brain and the body, and you know, to some extent, the field has kind of caught up to you, yes. caught up to you, and 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 is more people are sharing that interest now. Yeah, exactly. And I was wondering, um, you know, over the last several years, if there are any um, discoveries that have surprised you about the relationship between the brain and the body, or sort of the extent to which. Um, they can influence each other. Yeah, I mean, I have to say the fact that that, that is now there is uh, more and more evidence that the vagus nerve transmits this highly motivational reward types of signals to the brain is surprising. We uh, suspected this would be the case based on observations of measuring the, the brain reward system, mm -hmm. but it's really striking how effective a few sensory vagal neurons, uh, um, uh, how effectively they influence uh, the, let us say, the motivational part of the brain stem, the dopaminergic system. But I also find a very striking, uh, even earlier findings uh, linking 
the vagus nerve to the uh, control of the immunological system mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. So findings from uh, Kevin Tracy and yeah. others, I think they are uh, extreme, like they, they, they are kind of uh, game changers in terms of how we think about um, the function of the nervous system in maintaining health and uh, immunity. So I think these are um, um, particularly uh, interesting uh, findings that I think will remain very, um, uh, will remain the focus of interest of many groups. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I was wondering also, could you talk a little bit about sort of what the future directions are for your work or what, you know, what new horizons you're excited to explore? Yeah, I mean, I, I always think, our, when I started in neuroscience, when I did my PhD, I worked with humans. I mm -hmm. did uh, human uh, neuroimaging and I never um, stopped thinking about the, uh, how we could translate the findings into something that have a meaningful uh, application in humans. And uh, this uh, system connecting the, the vagus and the microbiome and these glands uh, in the intestine, they are of particular interest to me because this system is highly conserved. Mm. In humans, we are actually looking at uh, anatomical sections in humans as a validation for the mouse work. So I think uh, like uh, overall in the future, I want to explore more this idea that the emotional part of the brain is uh, controlling the body, uh, body immunity and many other processes. And I want to find uh, uh, ways to extend the research to humans, M eventually taking advantage of patients who are uh, um, undergoing vagal stimulation treatment um, and, uh, and other uh, um, types of intervention. But I, I, I am excited about uh, the idea that what we see in preclinical models can actually be um, naturally uh, translated into human research. Oh, very cool, very nice. Okay, I think we are just about out of time. Okay. But thank you for joining me today. Thank you. That was great. Thank yeah. you.